What's going on guys? The volatility is heating up big time. Today we saw a bunch of stocks have a crazy day. The market was all over the place. We have key earnings coming up and we have a lot of exciting moves about to happen. So make sure to stick with us all the way towards the end of today's video. We have some awesome setups to go over and some very important things that you will not want to miss this week because it is going to be one of the most exciting weeks for a while. So make sure to stick with us, but let's get right into it, Tom. Yeah, Mike, I will say the earnings are gonna be awesome over the next couple of days. Tomorrow, before open, we're gonna have Uber, Pfizer, British Petroleum, Marathon, Marriott Hotels, uh, even going down here, I mean, a lot of crazy stocks here. Scorpio tankers. Man, I will say Uber is going to be huge tomorrow morning, Mike. Everybody's been talking about Uber lately, along with AMD. I know a lot of people on the live stream this morning kept mentioning Uber. And going and looking at that stock, they actually had a pretty good run-up into earnings right now. And when I go out to that daily chart, you know, they're kind of breaking out of that long-term channel that they were in all of last year. And they're bouncing off of this perfect trend line down here at the bottom, which is just honestly right around the $30 support. So between the trend line, the earnings coming up, uh, everything going on with all the other positive earnings, I will say it's looking pretty good for Uber, at least heading into the report. Um, if the report goes south, obviously it can drop. But I will say these earnings are going to be so fun over the next couple of days. Uber is going to be my favorite tomorrow morning. And then, of course, we can't forget AMD and After Hours. Oh, yeah. And, you know, when you talk about AMD, there's one stock that you just could not ignore today. And that was the powerhouse NVIDIA. Literally all day long, this stock just kept going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Like NVIDIA was an absolute powerhouse today, Tom. Everyone was looking at it. Um, this stock over the past couple of weeks and months is just, it, it, it hasn't been stopping. You know, there's just so much buying activity flowing into this one. Yeah, there is. I mean, that recent low down there in November around 110 is insane considering we are at 289 right now. You're talking like well over 100% here. We're looking at 168%, right around 169% at that high of day today. So, that is an insane recovery. Like you said, it just keeps going up. And I feel like this one was definitely the favorite today. It was one of the best stocks to trade. And like you said, it just kept going and never really fell off all the way into close even. It held its ground. It fell off a little bit there in the middle of the day. But honestly, I'll take that for a, a little pullback considering that big uptrend that they had. And it wasn't just NVIDIA. I felt like there was a lot of stocks today that did pretty well. Like Spotify had a good day. AI actually had some good movement. And, you know, I even saw AMC have some pretty good movement today too, Mike. So pretty interesting to see some of those, you know, techish type stocks moving up like that. But we did have some stocks falling off too. Like poor SoFi, man, that one really tanked down with their earnings today. That was a disaster. And then we had the oil stocks falling off pretty hard too. True that, but Tom, you can't switch from NVIDIA that quickly. We still have a lot more to talk about. So everyone's looking at this stock right now and it's like, all right, it has a lot of momentum to the upside, but you know, do you really want to be buying calls right now or buying shares of NVIDIA when it's at $290 where just a couple months ago it was trading for $108 a share, but at the same time, it's kind of hard to short this stock when it literally only goes up every single day. So we're at a point right now where it's just, we're in a weird situation. So Tom, this is where we're gonna transition into the book map side of things to see what's uh, really going on behind the scenes. Yeah, so I will say, looking at NVIDIA right now today, we had that big breakout above 280 and where'd we get to on the chart here before we switch over, up right around this high of day, right around 290. So you would think, hey, there might be some big sellers overhead at 290, right? Well, let's go check in on the book map and see what it looked at or what it looked like here. So whenever we see this level here, 290, it's actually right here at the top where we have a bunch of orders. Now you can see ever since market open, which is on the left side of my screen where I'm moving my cursor, these orders came in right at open. So that means that all day long, these sellers were stacked here at 290. And guess what? We ran up, hit 290 broke above it very, very slightly, and then started falling back down slash consolidating for the rest of the day. 
And then we even saw more sellers come in at 290 after that big break over there earlier in the day. So I'm really going to watch this 290 level. I would not be surprised if right at market open, we saw another big stack of sellers come in there. And if we don't, and we start to break above 290, I think that we could see a big breakout to the upside, maybe like today, probably not as explosive. But if we do end up breaking this huge level where these sellers are stacking up, I think that we're going to see a big move tomorrow to the upside. But then again, we might reject because, man, Mike, that was too big of an uptrend today. I just... Like you said, it's hard to even buy this one up at this point. See, the thing is, is like the main uh, pivot point you can say is at this $290 level, but also even like $291 too, because those are just like giant levels where just like behemoth sized sell orders are just sitting there waiting to be filled. So it's like the main question is like, does NVIDIA have enough power and momentum to actually break through those giant sell walls? If it does, then it's like, all right, maybe you can justify playing the breakout and, you know, riding that, you know, just giant wave of buyers in the short term. But if it can't break above that, like, 290 or $291 level with some real momentum, you know, it, it'll be hard to justify a continued play to the upside with this one. Yeah, it really will. And I will say I've been leaning with puts on NVIDIA here for a long time, but it just keeps blowing me away every single day. Like we even have stocks like, for example, like Netflix today, you know, pretty bad day overall. A uh, Tesla down 1.5% today, definitely not the best day. But then NVIDIA, you know, just it's it's just blowing everybody away right now with its power. And I will say with the sector that they're in being graphics cards and chips, that is probably the best sector for the future. So I love NVIDIA and I love AMD for the long term. But right now, it's just a little bit overextended. I'm still a call player on this one, Mike. I know it's hard to play them right now, but until this momentum slows down, I don't think it's worth stopping on them. All right, there we go. Uh, some other big news that happened in the market recently is how JP Morgan literally stole <laughs> FRC or First Republic Bank. So FRC is... Uh, it's definitely, it has been one of the most popular stocks and most widely talked about stocks over the past couple months. This thing literally went from $171 a share all the way down to like $1.90 per share just over the course of a couple months. Uh, this is one of those like uh, regional banks that uh, suffered a lot over the past couple months. And news came out where JP Morgan is now the owner of FRC. And, you know, JP Morgan had a great deal here. They popped up in pre market. And, uh, you know, it's just making these bigger banks like JP Morgan stronger and stronger and stronger. It really is. And I could not believe that I saw this today. So it looks like that JP Morgan is obviously already the largest U.S. bank by several measures here. Obviously, they're getting this. They're getting all of their ailing, all the ailing banks deposits and a substantial majority of the assets, apparently. So they're definitely picking this up for a good steal, like you said, Mike. And then there's a lot of specifics on this that, you know, probably bore a lot of you guys to sleep. But as you start to scroll through here, there's a lot of stuff like they're getting provided with a $50 billion credit line and all types of other uh, things with this deal. But Mike, I will say, if I go over to JP Morgan's chart, it was pretty nice to see them popping up today. That was awesome for them to move up, which they should whenever they're getting such a good deal on a bank like this. And I see Wells Fargo moving up here as well today. Citigroup had a pretty decent day too, closing in the green. So this does give me some good hope for some of these banks to maybe go up, but just be very careful with these smaller banks. You know, I know that there's other ones out there like FRC, obviously they're not maybe doing as bad at the moment, but just be very, very careful. I like these big banks though, Mike, like Citigroup, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. I think those stocks are good ones to still buy right now, but a lot of these smaller ones are getting very, very scary here. Yeah, I know it doesn't really seem like it, but this FRC bank failure was actually the biggest bank failure since 2008. So that's pretty big. It's the second largest bank failure ever, which is just crazy to see. It's like, I feel like the news isn't really talking about it too much, but I guess, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I feel, I feel like it uh, kind of like snuck up on everyone. I really do too. And I can't believe it's even bigger than Silicon Valley banks collapse. You know, it looks like it came in around $20 billion worse there. So 
Ah, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely pretty big. Second biggest bank failure in history. I mean, that's a that's a pretty big statement there. So going back over to uh, the article though, Mike, it's just I just still can't believe that you know J.P. Morgan ended up getting them. We I, I think I what what we read half a dozen banks were putting into this bid. PNC being one of them, and a couple others like uh, looks like a Citizens Financial Group down here as well. So. Definitely a lot of bidders. And I guess JP Morgan, you know, Mike, with all their extra money and the powerhouse they are, of course they're going to win the bid. You know that. All right, Tom. Well, it's now time for some setups for tomorrow. One stock I am hawking pretty closely is Netflix. Uh, this stock started to tank down a little bit today, and it has some pretty strong support right around $318 per share and $317 per share. Uh, the stock has been just flat and just, you know, choppy over the past couple days. But if we see a retest of that 318 level, I will definitely be watching it for a play down. There's a lot of opportunity in this one for puts and just maybe even shorting the stock. But either way, I'm watching it very closely. Yeah, I like it for a play down as well. Like you said, it's been very flat lately, and I feel like if we start to move down under that level, that could be great. And We actually saw a lot of money go into the 400 puts uh, at the end of April there. So I think that's even big. Maybe follow the big money on this one. It seems like it's starting to play out kind of how we saw it. So looking good there uh, with my first play of the day, Mike. Of course, how could we not go over good old GameStop. I will say GameStop was a pretty weird stock today, Mike. And I know that we haven't mentioned this one in a while, but it is falling off pretty hard again. And it's breaking below recent support around $18.50 to $18.60. So if we move below $18.40 with GameStop tomorrow, I'm going to look at some puts. And I will say, Mike, let's go look at that hourly chart because it has been quite the adventure for GameStop over the past year or so especially ever since all that volatility came in and right now we're starting to get pretty low so i'm kind of looking for a retest of lows here over the next few weeks uh oh i bet you'll piss some people off with that one <laughs> <laughs> um for a stock that i'm watching uh we have ccj uh this is a uranium play and i also talked about this one in yesterday's video and it's been working pretty well so i'm gonna stick with it Basically, CCJ reported earnings the other day. It is in an earnings continuation setup, which basically means, you know, the stock will report earnings and it will continue in that direction, you know, for a couple of days or weeks, depending on how the str how strong the trend is. Uh, I am continuing to look at CCJ in a bullish way, and I'm looking for it to continue up. Um, like I said, it's an earnings continuation setup and this stock can trend. So I'll be watching it pretty closely to the upside. Yeah, that is huge to see that one continuing. I know you talked about it yesterday, so amazing play. Do not sleep on these setups, guys. I know that they don't always, you know, run up or explode in, in huge ways, but man, when they do, sometimes these breakouts can be amazing. Uh, with my second play of the day, I'm going to go with Spotify. Kind of like your play, Mike. It's kind of continuing up here today. I think Spotify has been a pretty crucial stock over the past few years and one of the more popular ones out there if we're able to break above 140 i think that we could get some solid movement and some solid volatility maybe up to 142 or 143 i don't think you should go crazy trying to target anything too high with this one but just watch it for a nice continuation it it, it actually moved up all day today it had very little pullback mixed in all right good stuff well, Tom, it is now time for those momentum plays. With today's first one, we have CCL to the upside. Yeah, I will say I was eyeing up CCL and RCL as the day went. If we break above 965, watch for some calls tomorrow. That's just above the high of day, and we almost double top there. All right, with the next one, we have NIO also to the upside. Wow, NEO to the upside, Mike. I can't believe you're saying that right now. Now, uh, they've been falling off so much. It was pretty nice to see him come back up here end of day. Let's go ahead and make him break above $7.85. I'll go ahead and circle. You can see there was a pretty big wick there this morning. And with the last one, we have Boeing and we need both directions. BA. Wow, this one fell off pretty hard here today. Um, go ahead and make them break down under 203.50, just under that low of day today. If they fall under that, Watch for some puts, but if they're able to get back above this 206 level, which was intraday support, go ahead and watch them for a nice move back to the upside. All right, so you guys heard Tom. We have that downside level on Boeing. If it breaks below that, we'll be watching it for a day trade to the downside tomorrow. We have oh, we also have that upside level, so if it breaks above that, 
We'll be watching it for a play up. Don't forget about NIO and CCL. Also for, for potential day trades to the upside tomorrow. But it is now time for the big money $1.6 million trade of the day. We are looking at none other than GM or General Motors. We had $1.6 million go into, now this one's a little bit advanced, but I'm gonna break it down in an easy way, but it is a call debit spread where they bought the 33 strike call options and shorted the 37 strike call options, both of which expire on June 16th of 2023. The main thing you need to know in a nice and simple way is that the big money is betting $1.6 million. That GM will go up by June 16th. And in a perfect world, the stock will be at $37 or greater for this trade to be profitable and like, or max profit, I should say. And looking at GM, you know, it's range bound. It's very close to that support right around $32 a share. It has resistance closer to like 41 to 42. I don't think it's bad at all. I don't either. That support down there around 32 or 30 has been huge over the past few months. And honestly, even the past year, ever since last like June slash July. So I'm definitely going to watch it for a move back up into this range. I know that GM has been doing a lot of stuff with electric vehicles and stuff like that. So hopefully it starts to pay off for them a little bit more. I will say I was expecting them to do a little bit better than this this year, Mike. But, you know, I can't hit them too hard given how so many socks fall, fell off over the past six months or so. You know it. All right. Well, keep a close eye on GM. You know, $1.6 million is nothing to ignore. And uh, the stock is at a major support level right now. But back to the current market, we are seeing a lot of volatility, a lot of good price action right now. We have huge earnings coming up over the next couple of days. On Wednesday, we have a giant event with interest rates. Uh, the Federal Reserve is set to increase interest rates yet again on Wednesday. So, Tom, it's going to be a volatile but very exciting week. Uh, today, we saw many options pop for, you know, anywhere between 100 and 300 percent. So that, that, that just tells you the volatility is definitely here and it's not going away. It's really not. And I will say, like you mentioned, multiple plays over 100 percent. Look at this, guys. Our bot was on fire today. Man, Mike, the sniper bot killed it. You know, we had amazing plays on Amazon puts here. Amazon had a bad day. We go to the free day trading channel. Guess what we had? NVIDIA calls at 9 a.m. This play ran up over 170% to the upside. Man, Mike, it was an awesome day for day trading. NVIDIA stole the show. And just like you posted here, it's time to party. <laughs> let's go so if you guys are into short-term trading definitely check out that first link in the description in the comments down below like tom said our nvidia play was called out super early this morning it went from 174 dollars all the way up to 480 dollars each so it was a great run up if you're looking for those day trades check out that first link in the description in the comments down below you'll save 41 dollars off your first month and in the worst case scenario you can cancel it any time not only will you get access to you know the bot day trades but we also have swing plays in big money multi-million dollar trades every single day among many other great features and benefits so definitely check it out uh, we will be raising prices pretty soon uh, because we have some giant updates coming that are scheduled for next week so if you want in now is the time uh, but besides that tom i'm pumped for the rest of the week the volatility is here. Earning season's here. We have some uh, awesome uh, stocks in place. So I'm very excited. Um, if you guys like the video, make sure to subscribe. When you subscribe, you'll see our videos recommended to you more often. And last but not least, let's have an amazing rest of the week.